host for the Northeast News Quiz, Mike Neville. That's almost worth being here. Hello, good evening. Welcome to that time of year when uh, we rewind through some of the highlights of 1996. A glittering prize is at stake, or more precisely, it's in the post. And in a moment, we'll be meeting the star studded teams fighting for the title Clever Dick of the Year. But first, a reminder of the Northeast year that was. It was another year of change. Out went more of the region's traditional industries and landmarks to make way for newer models and high tech employers like Siemens. There was, however, at least one tradition given a new lease of life. And everywhere there were signs of the Northeast revival. There was much to celebrate. Sunderland won promotion to the Premiership, and millions were spent bringing sporting superstars to the region. Alan Hinks conquered Everest, and Dame Catherine was in peak form at 90. We had our share of winners, although not everyone was thrilled with lottery funding to build the giant Gateshead Angel. Olympic silver medalist Jonathan Edwards picked up an MBE and Thirsk celebrated plans to open a museum dedicated to James Herriot. But there were tough times as well. Industrial unrest spread through the region. Even the newly invigorated shipyards were hit by strikes. Police forces started to use CS sprays and there was shock at the sudden death of animal star Chaz Chandler. Marsden Rock got a bit smaller, while a Halifax bomber was put back together near York. We said hello to lots of new visitors thanks to the year of the visual arts. And of course, Euro 96. And if the Bulgarians thought Scarborough was too quiet, I wonder what they'd have made of Teesside Soccer Supergrams getting their kicks in 1996. Let's meet the teams about to display their dazzling dexterity. Please welcome, in the girls' corner, from North East tonight, the glamorous Pam Royal. <laughs> the gorgeous Dawn Hewlett. <laughs> and the fabulous star of Soldier Soldier, Denise Welsh. <laughs> Have you all been doing your homework? You've just used mm. all the stories we knew. Really? Mm. Oh, well, what a pity they're not here. Limbering up for the boys now, Channel 3's dashing Andrew Friend. <laughs> the sensationally sporty Ian Payne. Oh. <laughs> and from Grundy goes, Grundy comes. Ah. Do you mean John Grundy? Ladies, we're just going to hammer you into the ground, basically, tonight, so uh, well, you might as well just stay in the dressing room. That's what you always say. Are you up to it? All ready to go, I know. We're going to have to stay for the programme. We start with a round where you have to spot the connection. There's one point if you get the right answer, and I'll offer it over to the other team if you're stuck. Let's start with the boys' team. And what's the connection here? An extremely handsome presenter. <laughs> <laughs> Chief Constable of Northumbria, Alan Shearer, and the former Cabinet Minister, Norman Lamont. Yes, yes. Another one. Another one. Well, only one of them cost 15 million. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> That's debatable. <laughs> Have you got the connection, chaps? Well, we have. We have. We think the, the connection is change. Uh, I hate to point out, like it's a churlish point out, that you haven't always been here, Mr. Michaels. <laughs> <laughs> Formerly at a different place. Mr. Sheer has moved around the, uh, the landscape. The other two are people I'm not very sure about. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. The Chief Councillor moved to Cambridge, huh? and uh, yeah, Norman Lamont moved to Harry. You see, Tory candidate. Well done. One point to the boys. Yeah. Yeah. Right, the girls' team now, let's take another look at a piece of film and tell me what the connection is. A new species of weed in the River Weir, the bulk carrier, Anisuria. The Nissan Car Company. And catering student, Shinova Kamata. Now, ladies, what
What is the answer? What's the connection there? Um, I think it's that they're all related to Japan. Correct! Yes! Well done, yes! You know, the weed came from Japan. God knows how it got to Wearside. The bulk curry was refitted on the time. And of course, you know the Kamato. That's too good, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the the boys. <laughs> The Boris team again. Can you spot the connection between the following? Dutch cannons found at a house in Beetle. This 19th century quilt. A particular football scrapbook. And rare museum pieces from Borough Bridge. What's the connection there, chaps? Could they? What? Yeah, who did that? <laughs> Me, sorry. Thank you, Bob. It's all right, you're allowed. Could they all have been discovered here in the region? No, no. I'll, no I'll have to add up the girls now. We think they're all old. <laughs> the girls are all old. Aren't and we? that's why we were sure that you <laughs> would get it. You're, <laughs> you're old, boy. Well, you're no, old in fact, no points, I'm afraid. The answer was they were all rediscovered after being lost or stolen. Cannons of Beetle, oh. the museum pieces stolen from Borough Bridge, the 19th century quilt. <laughs> Oh, we should get half of it. Don't we feel it? It's you now, isn't it? The girls now. Another look at these, please. Four more connections. That's Grindon Boys School. The Gateshead Angel. Alderman Fenwick's House. And the Durham Women's Amateur Rowing Club. What's the connection there? Um, we think that all of those projects were funded by the lottery. They were. were. <laughs> they were. Well done. All funded by the National Lottery. And we're winning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you lost one. Mm, I hear. Yes, yes, they're getting easier. you the answer to all yours. And our final connection for the boys, North East Hearthrop, Robson Green. There's Robson. Ashley Primary School's newspaper. A certain television personality. <laughs> and Sunderland Tourism Office. What's the connection there, Jabs? Oh, 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 oh. Yes? Me, yes. Well, when I saw Pam, I thought it was because they were all very beautiful. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh dear, yes. But I know, I know that Robson Green got an award recently, and uh, I'm sure I remember that school receiving an award for its marvellous, uh, its absolutely marvellous uh, school newspaper. I can't believe that Pam got an award. She? No, I, can't. Yes. No, I nearly dropped that, actually. This one, I remember. Yeah. I'd like to withdraw yes, that yes. one. Yes. I don't think yes. it was. I well, nearly did it. Otherwise, you might not have got it. You're right. One point to you guys. Yes, Pam, of course, got the Evening Chronicle First Night of the Year Award. Sunderland Tourism Office was uh, awarded the, uh, the Best in Britain. And uh, Robson Green, of course, won the North East Personality of the Year. Finally, the girls' final round in connections. What's the link here? An exploded shed. Forty thousand terracotta models. This giant poster of a cat. And an Easington flower bed. How are they connected? <laughs> the Euro Visual the Arts. Arts. They were all part of the Euro Visual Arts. We're oh. giving it away tonight, aren't we? <laughs> yes. well, just in case anyone is remotely interested, the scores at the end of the first round are two for the boys and the girls in the lead with three. Right. right. Fingers on buzzers now because we're going in for one of our hugely exciting quick fire rounds. One point for each correct answer. Why was the prospect of a ship sailing past Hadrian's Wall in the news? Go. Um, it, somebody's idea to build a canal from, from west to east. Correct. Whose visit to the Raj Indian restaurant at Low Fell oh, made Paul Gascoigne. <laughs> Paul Gascoigne because he trashed the restaurant? Oh. Yeah. Excuse allegedly. me, allegedly. he allegedly, allegedly. He allegedly <laughs> crashed the restaurant, <laughs> which I find quite amazing for Gaza, really. 
Now, also making the headlines uh, was Frida Fentress Ellaby of North Yorkshire. Why? I think she was evicted from the farm that had been in her family for many, many years. That's right, and she went back, and the story is still going on. Saying in North Yorkshire, have a look at your screens now. Why? What was the problem with this post box? Yes, go. It was a gift from the twin town of was I Nursborough or Harrogate for, from their twin town in Germany, and it was yellow, and they objected to it being yellow because it wasn't red. Because it wasn't red. That's right. Twin town of Nairsborough. Andrew Shaw. Peter Shopping by the Royal Mail. Mail. <laughs> Another point for the girls there. We're doing awfully well. Right. Why in early May were the streets of Newcastle virtually deserted? <coughs> uh, oh, I don't know. No, no, I don't know. I don't know. I thought you were going to go somewhere for a minute then. Grundy goes. Because just about everybody yes. was either at Wembley or watching the, the charity show. No, 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 no. no. Can no. I, that wasn't in no. May. Can I I'll give it to the girls one? now. Oh, no, oh, no, 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 you can go. Everything's I'm going to give it to the girls. It was the, the premiership decider thing. That's the one, <laughs> didn't it? Which, at St James's, which I must, which I must tell, uh, as Ian probably knows, Newcastle Ross to Manchester. Hang your head in shame, lad. I can go now, can't I? Sorry, get that one, did you? How about this one? Shame, Ian. The Buskers of Tyneside had something to celebrate in 1996. What was it? Well, what's it the saying? Buskers. Oh, the Buskers. Buskers. Yes. Boys. They got permission to go on to the Metro. That's right. Mm, the band yes. was lifted. They could entertain yes. the people. Yes. Thank you, brother. Yes. Well, there's one for the boys. <laughs> <laughs> now then, you like this. Here's a video of a naked man. Oh. Where did it cause outrage? Uh, yeah. uh, Where did it cause outrage? Durham Cathedral. Durham Cathedral, why? It wasn't open because the, <laughs> Virgin, the Virgin, Virgin objected. Yes. The police yes. objected, actually. It was part of the well, to say you're embarrassed, it was I very, say, very, very yes, it was eventually covered yes. up from yes. uh, the waist yes. down, yes. I think. Right. In which northeast city is the National Glass Centre? Yes. Sunderland. Sunderland. Oh. This one, light went on first, girl. Because they're very clever lights. <laughs> eh? No, I didn't. I threw no, that one away. That one. Now, here's a transparent question for you. Which Northeast author brought out a book exposing the scandals of daytime <laughs> television? <laughs> Denise, Robertson. Denise Robertson is right. <laughs> Speaking of names, what's the connection between Oscar of Hollywood fame and the Wensleydale Creamery? Right, Wensleydale Creamery have used Wallace and Gromit as their logo, and he won the Oscar for Wallace and Gromit. Um, yes, yes, they named oh. the cheese after them. I'll give yep. you that. Wonderful. Endless. She's named after Wallace and Gromit. Half a pound of Wallace and Gromit, please. Thank you very much. Catherine Cookson celebrated her 90th birthday this year. In which northeast town was she born? Uh, South Shields. Correct! Oh, okay. And why? Yeah, you better get her out of course. It's sympathy, really, isn't it? Why did Newcastle's famous swing bridge find itself in the news? Uh, it's not going to be opened anymore because somebody else has taken it over. Or something. That's Being, right. I'll something like that. that. Yes. I remember the Port Authority wanted I'm to stop it from swinging over. Is that enough? I don't have to go on any further? No, no, oh. that's enough, John. There you are. And another point of the noise. Oh. Oh. And at the end of that action packed round, I can right. tell you that the girls' team have ten, and Andrew and the boys are down there with seven. Now, as you've seen this evening, the stars of Channel 3 North East are poised, unflappable, hugely intelligent, and never heard a loss of words. Or so we thought, but as we picked through the sweepings and the cutting room floor, a rather different picture began to emerge. Oh, well, uh, I forgot where this is. <laughs> Tonight, two men are convicted of plotting an escape from Durham Jail. Their trial followed the discovery of gun parts smuggled into the prison. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Oh, sorry. Now, health experts are worried that more and more children these days are not getting enough exercise and they're turning into couch potatoes. One of the problems is that they're driven to and from school. My turn. <laughs> this adds to traffic. That's so unusual, Andrew, because Pam's usually so reticent, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, yes. They didn't show any of my outtakes because the programme's only half an hour long. <laughs> oh. uh, don't go away, we're back in just a minute for the final thrilling instalment of the North East News Quiz.
served only at the famous Brunswick Hill Warehouse and branches throughout the Northeast. Bryant think a home should be individual. Be set apart in lots of space. And be in the best location. So shouldn't you be calling 0500 500 003 and discovering it's the Bryant Fort that really counts? Nobody can afford to miss unrepeatable prices at the greatest ever SCS sale. Choose any suite free for one whole year with up to three years free credit this weekend. Welcome back to Channel 3's Dance at the Mastermind. <laughs> oh, so, uh, we go straight back into the fray and around, imaginatively entitled, What Happened Next? It's, I'm going to show each team a piece of film, and for one point they have to tell me, surprisingly enough, what happened next? And we'll start, girls, with you. What do you think about it happening yes. there? Yes, yeah. um, the tank falls off the loader thing as it's being as it's being. It's pretty good, guess though. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's and see. falls right. down an embankment. Yeah, there it is. The army tank is being loaded onto a railway truck at Wensley Day in line, obviously looking for Wallace and Gromit cheese. Another tank was loaded on. The original tank suddenly topples off, leaving a driver shaken but unhurt. I think I'm right in saying we've got exclusive pictures of that as well. Oh, yes, I think. Yes, you did. Oh. Yes, you did. <coughs> Very good, that. The British remember? Army needs you. You were at the Beeb at the time, weren't you, Mike? And we got the best pictures. I was somewhere else, actually, yes. yes. <laughs> we didn't have a free camera that day. <laughs> they were both out somewhere. <laughs> 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 a memorable moment for the world of sport now, for the lads. Can you speculate about what happened really next? This. You forget it. Yeah, more embarrassing. You take the There we go. Looks like a penalty. Oh no, it isn't. That looks I, like I, I didn't cameras. say that. <laughs> uh, I know this one. Do you? You know this one. You sure this one. you do, Dave? No. I do, I know yeah. this one. Do you know what is it? Which team was it first of all? Which one was it? The questions from over there are hard. Right, okay, right. I'll keep quiet. If necessary, I'm gonna take a I'll guess actually at Crook's town. Hmm? Is it Crook? No. That's not important anyway. I don't want to know what happened. What happened next was it hit the woodwork. Came back and hit the goalkeeper. On the back of the head, I bet it was. And then into the goal. And uh, perfectly right. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Perfectly right. What a man. What a man. And uh, let's see what it is. Let's see what it is. Let's see it. Let's see it. It's worth a watch. There we are. The team's worth <laughs> oh, it. Oh, oh, oh. I think it's cruel to show that again, yeah. don't you? I think that's yeah. really cruel. That well, lad was trying his best. That was the <laughs> <He> constant <laughs> goalkeeper <laughs> called Dickie Lee. And just think, these days, he could be making commercials. All oh. these gullies are making commercials. I'm thinking of taking it up. <laughs> anyway, that's one part of you lads, just to inject a bit of drama into the proceedings. Can I tell you that the scores now read at the, the boys have eight, and the girls have eleven. Yay! I'm going to have it again. It's all one big fix. <laughs> <laughs> it's three against three and a half, isn't no, it? Just yeah. add the numbers, you know, <laughs> random numbers. <laughs> In, uh, in previous years on the news quiz, it's been our pleasure, well not mine because I wasn't here, to invite <laughs> well-known personalities to dress up in pantomime costume and uh, film them from very funny angles so the teams haven't the faintest idea who they are. Well this year is no exception. Girls team, can you guess who is this Prince Charming? You can talk among yourselves, you know, be mm -hmm. privy to your debating. Right. Nice pink I use the word. Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Nice but how you can recognise them from the backside, <laughs> I've no idea. Yeah. Pam could. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely joke. You can't see his face at the moment, but while I'll give you one yeah, little clue. Is there a trick in the his, question? Is this someone who's up. known as being a sort of a Prince Charming type of character or someone? Oh no, he's totally out of that. No, his, his upper lip at the moment is rather naked. And did you see how he no, no. spun yeah. that cloak around himself? <coughs> <laughs> 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 they know it, don't they? We know who it is. <laughs> <laughs> we know who it is. Can you know who it is? Right. They, no? Any ideas? Peter Mandelson. 
Peter, Peter Mandelson. Yes. yes. Let's see if you're right. Let's see if you're right. There he is. Peter Manson, Labour MP for Hartlepool and close confidant of Tony Blair. Of no, I get it now, spin doctor, spin doctor, that's yeah. what you're trying to do. Oh, ah, yeah, well, yeah. I didn't understand it myself. <laughs> <laughs> right out, chaps, the boys now, you have to work out which famous Northeast personality is behind the cloak of the Panto Wizard. Um, it's a very mm -hmm. shiny cloak, isn't it? Star? Oh, no, no, no. that's double. That could be Pam. <laughs> <laughs> oh, charming! Oh, delightful! <laughs> no, come on, there, lads. Uh, oh dear, needs a shave. Yeah, like oh, it needs dear. a better razor. I would have said that. Oh, I think. You know who this is? They tell you. Oh, I've got it. I've got have it. Have you really Come on, right. it's just before you yeah. give a silly Go answer. On, Are we allowed to hear? Yeah. Yeah. No, you're not allowed to hear. Not while oh. uh, that little list. We'll go for it. Yeah. Uh, oh, no! Oh, no that's no. genuine. Oh, I want to go for that. It's all... Go for it then, Andrew. OK. Yeah. Yeah. We know. I bet he got expenses for this. Oh, oh yes. I bet he got lots and lots of expenses. <laughs> Who is it, do you think? It's Luke Casey. Well, let's see if it really is. It oh, is. Lord. It Absolutely. is. Absolutely. Come on, then. Positively. Yes, yeah. 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 It's Luke Casey, award-winning Channel 3 journalist and presenter of the Dale's Diary. He, he looks better than his costume, And a lovely he? man, yes. an old pal of mine. <coughs> Very old. If you're still <laughs> awake, you may be interested to know the scores at the end of the round are 9 for the boys, 12 for the girls. Well, if your nerves can stand it, we're about to embark on the dramatic climax of tonight's Clash of the Titans. <coughs> so, fingers on buzzers for our final round. Are you ready? Yeah. Oh, yes. Look at the screens. Let's see what made this dog an expensive pet. The boys. She brought it all the way back from Greece. Uh, quarantine, flights, vet bills, the works. That's Cost right. The all the way from Corfu, spending more than <coughs> £3,000 bringing it home. Marvelous. Why were people in North Yorkshire happy to wash their cars? the end of the hosepipe ban. It was. Staying in North Yorkshire, why was this girl serving a writ on her school? Boys. Because they were going to close it. Really? Okay. What? They were going to close it before she took her exams. Yes. Ish. Yes. That, she and other people were campaigning yeah, to right. prevent yes. your college girls closing before Christmas. They want to repeat, by the way. Oh. Yeah, I it get thrown calling us lot boys. That's what does it. <laughs> <laughs> Why did the Honey Monster fail to score on Wearside? Ian. Because Kevin Keegan did the commercials for Sugar Puffs. And? And they didn't like it. And they it. didn't like it because he's not from Sunderland. That's right. For a <laughs> consumer boycott by Sunderland yes, fans. Yes, just down the road from Roger Park, doctors at the Sunderland Hospital came up with a wonder treatment for cuts. What was it? A wonder treatment oh. for cuts. It was based on uh, something that um, was uh, sort of fleshy. I bet it was play yeah, You don't know, do you? You don't know. I'm going to ask the girl. Do you know the answer? Uh, no. No? no, it wasn't. It was super glue. Super I said play yeah. That was the closest. It's in one of our stories. That's that's true, yeah. Yeah. Ian got stuck with now, this one, I love it. 1996 saw an increase in the number of ostrich farms in the region. How much would you pay in a supermarket for half a pound of ostrich meat? I'm a high living sort of chap, actually, and I buy a lot of ostrich meat, actually. I've been down to my local Asda in order to buy ostrich meat a lot, and I reckon. Oh, I'm going to say £4.75. Well, you'll be wrong, and I'll give it to the girls. Half a pound of ostrich six, meat. Six pounds? Was it about six pounds a pound? So did you say half, half a pound? I said half a pound. I think it's about a pound. No, you're yeah, both wrong. It's five, five pounds. pounds. Oh, I was close. Oh, no, oh, four pounds. Oh, four pounds. Oh, four pounds. Oh, five. Five. I, couldn't buy, <laughs> I wouldn't mind being a shopkeeper with you lot around, I tell you. I think I deserve well, from big birds to pot bellied pigs, <laughs> why was Flossie in the news? Yes, go. Because she's... She was stinking so much that the, the <laughs> <laughs> next door neighbours um, took out an injunction or something. Yeah. That's right, the neighbours took their yeah. illness to court because of the noise and the smell. Yeah. They didn't mind, uh, allegedly, yes. Allegedly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they were allegedly young. 
Right, the final question now. What County Durham battle was reenacted after 650 years? Chaps. Nebros. Nebros. Fourteen. Thank you very much 30, indeed. 46. <clears throat> Which brings us to the end of tonight's pantomime uh, competition <laughs> and the moment you've all been waiting for. The results in second place, the boys with 11 points. Oh, but tonight's <laughs> champions with 15 points are the girls. What a thrilling denouement, whatever that means. <laughs> I think I need to lie down in a darkened room now. <laughs> May I thank Pam Royal, Dawn Thewlis and Denise Welsh. Thank you. And Andrew Fenn, Ian Payne and John Grundy. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, many thanks for your company. Hope you're enjoying what's left of the festive season. And we'll see you again at six on Monday. Until then, from us all, a very good night. Good night.